This is part two of finding the equation of a line. We're going to look at some special cases and an application problem. So we're going to look at horizontal and vertical lines, equations of parallel and perpendicular lines, and then one problem where you actually could use it outside of the classroom. When you write an equation of a horizontal and a vertical line, they're a little different. In this case, in a horizontal line, the x value changes while the y value stays the same. Therefore, all you do is you state what the y value is. So in this case, y equals 5. But all across that line, y is going to be 5. It doesn't matter what x is. So therefore, we don't need it in the equation. And if you remember from one of the um, previous lessons with slope, in this case, my slope is 0 because I have no vertical change. So it'd be 0x in the front of the 5 anyway. Vertical lines, on the other hand, are a little bit different. Because you remember from vertical lines, my slope is undefined. So in this case, in a vertical line, the y value changes while the x value stays the same. So the same rule that we used up here, if the y value stays the same, we just use that equation. And here, my x value stays the same, so I'm just going to literally say it's x equals 3. It doesn't matter what the y value is, it can be any of them, but the x always has to equal 3. So in this case, x is going to equal 3. Next, we're going to look at writing an equation of a line if you're given a point in a line that is parallel to that one. So here, we're going to write an equation of a line that passes through 4, 4, and it's parallel to y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 2. Now, we want to remember from slope that parallel lines have the exact same slope. So in this case, if line 1, my slope is, in the case that we're given, m equals negative 2 thirds. My slope of the next problem is m equals 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds. And my point is 4, 4. Now we're going to use the point-slope form of the equation, which is the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Let me plug it in. So we have y minus 4 equals negative 2 thirds x minus 4. And distribute the negative 2 thirds through. So negative 2 thirds times x is negative 2 thirds x. Negative 2 thirds times negative 4 is positive 8 thirds. We're going to add the 4. So in this case, we have y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 20 thirds. You can change that to a mixed number if you wish, and you end up getting 6 and 2 thirds. But you can leave it as an improper fraction as well. It really depends on how your teacher decides that they want the answer written. So that's how you find the line if it's parallel to it, because the slopes are the same. If you notice, the slope here is negative 2 thirds, and the slope in my original problem is negative 2 thirds. So those two lines are going to be parallel, because the slopes are equal. A line that's perpendicular to it, if you notice, we have the exact same thing. The only difference is we're looking for one that's perpendicular to it. If you remember from the slopes, perpendicular lines have slopes that are the negative reciprocals of each other, which means if my slope in line 1 is negative 2 thirds, my slope in time 2 is going to be 3 over 2. We're going to flip the fraction over, which is the reciprocal, and we're going to change the sign. And my point is still 4, negative 4, or 4, 4. We're now going to use the point slope form again, because I have a point, and I have my slope. So we're going to plug into the equation. So y minus 4 equals 3 halves x minus 4. Distribute the 3 halves through. So y minus 4 equals 3 halves x minus 6. Add the 4 to both sides. So we end up getting y equals 3 halves x minus 2. Next thing we're going to look at is an application problem. Now, application problems can come in a variety of formats, and it really just depends on the information that we get out of the problem. So, however, whenever you're reading a word problem, the first thing you always want to do is actually to write down all the information they gave you. So in this case, they told me it increased by about 60,300 people per year. And then they said in 1996, the population was 3,204,000. And then it said that it starts in 1990. So that's actually very important for this, because we could go all the way back to zero, but the problem is going to be a lot more complicated for us to figure out. And it really doesn't make sense all the way back there, because then we're going to have a negative population. So it's really important to understand with years where it starts. In this case, 1990 is going to be zero. So 1996 will actually be six. Once you've got the information written down, now we have to actually start writing it in a way that's going to help us solve the problem. We're looking for an equation that says write a linear model, which is another word for a linear equation. So we've got our slope, because that's where it says increased by 60,300 per year. That's a rate of change. So that's my M, 60,300. Next thing we're going to do is get our point. Now in this case, my point is 6 for 1996, because we're starting in 1990, so it's 6 years later, and the population of 3,204,000. 
Now we have our slope and a point. We're just going to plug into our point slope formula, just like we've been doing quite a few of the problems recently. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we plug in our values. So y minus 3,204,000 equals 60,300 times x minus 6. Distribute it to 60,300. And we get 60,300x minus 361,800. Add the 3,204,000 to both sides. And this is our equation we get. Y equals 60,300x plus 2,842,200. Now, if you notice, there's one other question at the end of it. It says, then estimate the population of Oregon in 2014. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the information we have again. And we're going to take our equation that we have. And we're going to find 2014. So the first thing we have to find out is how many years since 1990 is 2014. In that case, x is 24. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our original problem and plug in 24. So we have y equals 60,300 times 24 plus 2,842,200. ,200. So we calculate that out and we get the population of Oregon in 2014 is 4,289,400. So this is an application use of the point slope formula equation. There's other ones that you could actually have given you two points, and you do the same thing that we were looking before with finding the equation of a line with two points. The key to the application problems is getting that information down. So then you could figure out, okay, what do I have to do from there?